Hello, welcome to Top of the World. I've got a bit of a problem. It's electrical, I think. <clears throat> so I was out in the forest picking up and uh, went to start the snowmobile, wouldn't start. Turned the key a couple of times and it just started. And uh, I thought, that's strange. Probably best I don't turn that off anymore. And I wasn't that far away, but I didn't turn it off. Picked up everything I needed to pick up, come back here. So, because I think it's electrical, we need to do some electrical testing. So I've taken off the air box and I'm down to the battery. I've gone and got the test meter. And the problem is with the engine start, stop out. There's nothing on the key at all. The first thing we're going to do is check the battery. Make sure I actually have some power to the battery. Yep, 13 volts. Okay, so we've got a couple of small fuses down here. Let's check those. Yep, that one's good. And that one's good. Okay. And my terminals are tight. We've never had an electrical problem on this before. Okay, we've got some fuses. Got some fuses here. I'm not even going to pretend I understand what all of these do. Oh, well, they're, they're spares. Ignition, 15 amp. Okay. Uh, let's check these fuses in. Let's check the ignition one first. Good. Good. Yep. 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 Okay. So we know there wasn't a fuse blown. Oh dear. Well, that's all the simple things done. That's, there's, there's a very fine crackling down there. So that tells me that's a cable, probably to the starter motor. Where is the starter motor? Oh no. Is it cold today? Yep. It's not cold enough to need gloves all the time, but I'm getting cold. Okay, I have no idea. Can't remember where the starter motor is. But I know it's buried down in there somewhere. We're gonna have to go and put some heat on the tractor and um, try and get it inside, I think. It is a nice day. I'm getting on nicely. It's very cold. The ground is firm, so I'm still walking on top of the snow. And uh, obviously it's a very beautiful day to be out. I don't know what temperature it is, minus six, minus seven, nothing too bad. That's centigrade. But I don't think this old girl's going to start. I think she's going to need a little bit of heat to get it going. No chance, no chance, no chance. Plug her in. She's gonna need a few hours with heat on her to get her going before she rolls up, but that's all right, we can get on with wood processing. So what we were doing here, before we had our day ruined, This is the big stuff that's going for chainsawing and splitting. And this is all our thinnings, tops and branches. And we'll run it through our... Oh, that's cold. We'll 
run it through our machine. And then anything that's a certain size goes straight into there and everything else goes into there. And then that is the tops. We cut this up for kindling. This is for the small wood stoves, the spiss. And uh, yeah, we can work our way through that lot while we're waiting for the big machine to warm up so we can use the big machine to get that machine inside. Where am I with this? Well, without stripping it down, I think... I don't think it's a solenoid. Could it be the starter? Could be the starter. Is the starter jammed? No, I don't think so. So, we do know it's electrical, and we're expecting it to be the starter, because I don't think it's a solenoid, but it might be the solenoid, but we know it's not a fuse, and we know it's not the battery. So we're going to... Take this part now and crack into it. So I done the obvious, but I done the obvious when I was in the yard, and that was to arc the two um, sides of the starter solenoid. But it arced up as if I was touching both terminals of the battery, like like it was shorting out on one side. So then what I've done, because I couldn't make any sense out of that. I've removed this from the starter relay. And to make sure everything is right, put that in the dead side of the starter relay. Okay, let me show you there. Right, so this terminal, this is the lead that goes to the starter motor. Right, that should be bolted onto there like that, right? And you should be, to test whether the relay is not working, just be able to arc those two together, right? With a screwdriver or a spanner I used, lots of sparks, 
it was if this was earthed out. Well, it can't be, right? Because when you turn the key, that sends 12 volts of power or 13 volts of power to that, which sends it down this cable, and that throws the starter motor and turns the engine. No, that's not what's happening. It's arcing out in a big way. So just to prove my point, what should happen is when you turn the key on this, right, you should get full power out of there. And you'll see from my meter, where is my meter, put my meter there. Take the emergency stop off, put that in there, put that to there, turn the key, nothing. Dead. So that tells me the starter relay is not working, but the fuse is good. Okay, but I still weren't happy with the arcing, so I did this. I turned my meter to give me a circuit. Okay, if I put this on here, which is a positive lead, and then I touch it to ground, and I've got a circuit. Touch it to the body, I've got a circuit. And there's no way should I have a circuit. So we know that either this cable is damaged and is earthing between here and the starter, or the starter is US because we should not be getting a circuit on a positive lead to the starter motor. And we also know the starter relay is not working. So there's two issues. The starter relay is not working, and I've got an earthing socket on my positive cable to the starter motor. None of that is good. None of that means it can get fixed today, maybe not even tomorrow. And all of that is going to involve a cost. So if the armature's gone in the starter motor, the starter motor is thrown away. If it's brushes or something else gone in one end, then I can maybe, possibly, repair it. Well, the starter motor. Do we even want to go where the starter motor is? I don't know if you can stay, take the starter motor out through the inspection hatch underneath. If you can't, the engine has to be removed. All right. I'll take you under there and we'll see. So we've got this inspection hatch, which is how you change the oil filter. Underneath and up there is the starter motor. I don't know why it's not focusing. Anyway, does that look like that can come out of there? No, it doesn't. It definitely doesn't look like it can come out of there. So the first thing I've got to do is check, see whether that cable there is earthing out. If not, it's the starter motor. And I'm pretty sure if the starter motor has to come out, that's an engine out. All right, have I got time to be messing around taking engines out of snowmobiles? Now, no, I don't. Can I do what I've got to do without a snowmobile? No, I can't. <sighs> anyway. It's now 16.30, I've had a gut fall today. I started really early, because I wanted to get anywhere, it doesn't matter, because now we're broke again. I hate that thing, I do, I really do. Horrible thing, most unreliable machine I've ever owned. And in a different world, <clears throat> I'd have set fire to that. Okay, so what do I know? Mm. So what we've discovered conclusively is the starter motor has gone to ground, All right? So we know that's no good. And that starter relay is no good. So uh, we have um, a snowmobile breakers, not a million miles away from here, certainly within two hours drive. So off I go to see this uh, snowmobile breaker. He doesn't have the starter motor or the solenoid for this or anything. I have to go to, reluctantly, not because I don't want to, just because of the cost, the Yamaha dealer, which 
I know quite well. We bought this particular machine from them and all the parts for it when it breaks, <clears throat> which is annually. Anyway, interestingly enough, the man that owns the Yamaha dealer, he doesn't speak a lot of English and my Svenska isn't good enough, my Swedish isn't good enough to have a conversation about something I don't talk about. It's not really good enough to order a cup of coffee. No, that's not true. Anyway, so without really thinking about it, he was in a shop by himself and he was working on a machine and, and I just started talking to him. And um, so we're talking about this and we're talking about the problems and, I, you know, he's asking me what's the matter with it and I've explained it to him. And he said, oh yeah, the, the start mate, if it's gone to ground, it's kaput. And uh, as a result of that, that's what's burnt out the relay. So you need a new starter mate around the relay. Okay. So I've done a little bit of research to find that it's not unusual for some of these to have starter motor problems. So I'm talking to him about this. And, uh, and uh, you know, I said, well, why is the starter motor failed? Why does these things keep breaking? Oh, he didn't know. And then he thought about it, he said, but you use it for logging, you use it for wood. And I was like, yeah, oh yeah, he said. What do you mean, oh yeah? He said, well, how many times do you start your snowmobile in the course of a normal day? I don't know, 20, 30? And as I'm saying it, it's kind of coming to me. 20 or 30 times, yeah, yeah. And he said, well, you know, a snail bill, he said, uh, maybe it started four or five times in a day. He said, but you can start yours four or, four to four or five times just picking up one tree. Well, and that's true, and I'll explain why. When you drop a tree and you drop it in line, usually I drop it next to the snail bill track, I then cut it up into sections that I can lift and put it on the sled. And then I go back and I start this and I draw alongside the first section, turn it off, get out, pick that up, get back on, start it, move it along. So I can actually start this five times, picking up just the main sections of the tree. And I've usually dropped a number. Can I start this 10 times just loading the log sled? Yes, is the truth behind that? Yes, I can. And then that's just picking up one load. I'm doing four or five loads a day. Then there's a the starting in the morning and then there's the starting and the stopping while I'm walking around and having a look. And I don't think about it. And the reason that you start and stop these specifically is the radiator for the water cooling is very small. You can see it right there. This is the radiator. It's tiny because it's a snowmobile. It's designed to run in the cold. It just is. Do I have any problem starting this in any temperature? No. No, there's no heat to it, there's no preheat. There is no issue starting this in the winter. However, it does tend to overheat, and I don't mean overheat as in get hot, the fan starts running and blah, 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 and it, it just, and the battery's good, so you just stop and start. It's really easy, you just flick the button and it just starts. Does that mean that I could potentially use a lifetime's worth of starter mate? I mean, it is a 2006 model, so it's done well. Anyway, so, so he wasn't surprised when he kind of thought about it and realised what I was doing. Uh, many men that use these for working, for logging, that, that they do the start, the starter mate burns out. And for whatever reason, where it burns out in the armature, it goes to ground. I'm not quite sure there because I haven't opened it up, I will. And then, of course, that burns out the starter relay. So, then my next question, since he's a Yamaha mechanic, was the hole where the starter mount comes out of is really small. Do I need to undo any of the engine mounts or can I get it out of the hole if I take the oil filter off? And he said, yeah, it's tight, it comes out. It's no problem. So... My next course of action is I have already drained the oil. And I've got to tell you, considering I did an oil change, 
I don't like the looks of that very much. It also smells, hmm, smells a bit burny. Anyway, so I've drained the oil, so we're gonna put the pipes back on there. I've already got out oh, the oil filter. I've removed that. And I've removed the battery. And I've removed the start solenoid. And I've removed the cover housing there and the air box. And that's the battery top. So we are left with the battery out, the solenoid out, which goes in there, and the oil drain down. I'm going to put the pipes back on. And then what I'm going to do, because I don't really want to be lowering on my back and working through this tiny little hole, I'm going to roll her over on her side. And that'll give me good access. Whip the starter motor out. I did order a new one. We don't even want to discuss that. And uh, if the gods are with me, it'll arrive today and I can drive to town and get it. And then we can fit this because it's Friday and uh, I missed such a good period of, of weather this being down. Anyway, yeah, that's what we're going to do. Now. Ah. I've got an axle stand and the pallet, that will stop it from rolling this way. And there's a strap there, and that stops it from going that way. And it's at its tilting point, so there's no pressure in either direction. But what that does do is allow me much, much better access to the underneath. And that specifically is what we're looking at. That very small out there, So the oil filter's been removed, the oil filter sits there. That there is the starter motor. This, in order to remove the starter motor, you have to remove this cable, that one, and then you have two bolts. That one, and that one. You remove those bolts, and then the starter motor comes out this way, so I'm told, between there and there. You can see how tight that is. Is it four fingers? Might be four fingers. Anyway, there we go. Okay, so I've taken the, the cable, that's the power cable, off of there, and I can't get anything in here except an ordinary spanner. The first nut came out really easy. The second one, I'm done really easy, but I can't get both hands in there, so figure it out like I did the last one. The last one, once I cracked it, just came out with my hands. Oh, well, maybe I can. Oh, yeah, I can. Let's hope the thread's not so long that I can't get this bolt out and get it out. There you go. Okay, that is the two starter motor bolts out. Now then, now we find out how easily this starter motor's going to come out. out past there is what I'm told. I don't see how it's going to come out of there. I'm not seeing how that can come out of there. That is not coming out of that hole. I was assured, as fiddly as it is, that it would come out. But I can see now, with its size, it isn't.
Now, if that Yamaha arm mechanic hadn't have told me you could get that starter motor out, I wouldn't have done this like this. That's what he told me, right, he's wrong. He's absolutely wrong. I would never have tilted this machine up like this to take that starter motor out if I'd have known I've got to either remove the engine or move the engine. So, first thing we're going to try is take, and take the front engine mounts out and lever the engine back. That's the first thing to try. So in order to get the front engine mounts off, we have to take the hood off, which I wish I'd done before I'd done all that. Then we need to take out the battery carriage, which is bolted in here, which has the ECU bolted to it. It's bolted at this end and this end. So four bolts, or six bolts actually, seven bolts, that'll take out that front carriage. And then the engine mounts are different on two sides. This is this side. The engine mount bolt has to withdraw that way. And on this side, we actually see it better once the battery carriage out, it has to withdraw that way. Right, that's the front engine mounts out. All right, that's a real fast job. So that's the battery carriage out. Put the back car battery carriage up there. Okay, so now we're going to remove this bolt here. And it's got to come out this way. And then this bolt here, and it comes out this way. I'm pretty sure I don't have to touch any of this. However, I have just seen somewhere we have got an issue. The steering bolt there, right, that's going to not want to be there. I need to move the steering left or right so it misses this steering arm bolt to give me a bit more room, which I can't do because it's sitting on its side, right? So I think we're going to have to put it down to do that. What I should have done is filmed how I've done that. Well, I've taken out the engine mounts there and there and then I fixed a D-ring to this fixing point down here and then I fixed a strap to itself round there and I pulled the engine forward as far as I can onto that steering nut. So it's as far forward you can see how out of line here the engine mounts are. Not far, but we don't know how much more room we need underneath to fiddle that starter motor out. What I do know is we've got more room than we had before. I just don't know whether it's enough room. Right, why are you giving me our time now then? Oh, that's because I fitted that the wrong way around. God knows what this... It's going to look like that. That cable out the way. I still don't think I have enough room to get that out. Oh, it's close. It's really close. But it's just not quite. Oh, oh. Yes. Come on. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, baby! Ah, got it. Well, amazing. Okay, so you can do it. You can do it with the ski straight. Ah, and you've really only got to do it a little bit. I wish I could show you. That's like a um, quarter of an inch on there. You just got to move it. See, solid. It's absolutely solid. Okay. Now, um, my intention is to take this apart to find out what occurred. Oh, 
Okay, well, it don't look too bad in there. The brushes have, have popped out because uh, I slid the back off. But there's nothing that disturbs me about that. Well, that's jam solid in there. Okay. Well, that don't look too bad either. So, what what is the issue here? Right, well, the issue's in here. Oh, oh, okay, well that all looks quite good, right, that's good, all of those bits are good, we don't have a problem, the problem is in here. Look at that. So that's what it should look like. And that's what it looks like. Can we put a light on? Have we got a light now then? All right. So this is what it should looks like. And this is what we've got. Yep. That has destroyed itself. So now what we've got to do is wait for my phone to ring. Hopefully it's going to ring today and we can go to town, get a replacement, put that in. That's probably, let's call it two hours to put that lot back together, maybe two and a half hours. Does that mean that I could have it running today? I don't know. I don't know, but it depends because we might pick up the part today or it might be Monday, which means we don't have a snowmobile over the weekend and um, it's getting warmer. There's many reasons I don't like coming to town. <clears throat> but the worst of all is every time I come to town, I feel like I've had my pants pulled down. Have I had my pants pulled down this time? Oh yeah, for sure. How do you know I'm in town? Let's say you know I'm in town. Yeah, I'm definitely in town. I'll show you what I've got when I get back. <clears throat> but I had to buy some oil. Did I have to buy some oil? Yeah, I really wanted to replace the oil in there. And I knew oil was getting expensive. It used to be just cheap. Obviously, we had the experience uh, about 10 months ago when we bought all the different oils for the tractors. And um, I felt like then, you know, I'd had my pants pulled down. Is it cheaper to buy the most expensive extra virgin olive oil and put that in your engine instead of engine oil? Yeah, it is. Not a lot cheaper but it is cheaper. All right, so, by the power of editing. <sighs> Yammer lube. Oh, I should have just got generic oil. Anyway, let's not focus on that. Let's focus on this. Start a relay. Okay, that's the right one. We need that.
And that looks exactly like the right thing. Oh yeah. Alright, so I've rubbed a little bit of oil around the rubber seal. Now all I've got to do is remember in which way this came out so that I can fiddle it back in. So you just have to give it a little, once you get it lined up, a little push to get that rubber seal to push in. Right, that's the first bolt. Okay, let's bolt it up. So that is the start motor in. We installed the cable there. Now we're gonna put the oil filter on and uh, bolt up this hatch. Just lower that down until it fits, or lower it past it and pull it back up. One of the two. Yeah, well, I knew that was going to be the case. That's actually past where I want it to be. Somewhere there. Oh, there you go. As easy as that. Yeah, straight in. Click, click. Nice. And remove the small D ring that I had to hold it into place. <sighs> Always useful to have things like this lying around. Probably only need it once every 25 years. Okay, now the first thing I've got to remember is to tuck this end up underneath the wiring ring. ECU attachment. Click, correct. That's dropped in place. Is that right? Yep, yeah, just like that. Okay. Now we're going to install the new start switch. OK, 
Okay, that's that. That doesn't go onto that. Where's the, there. Uh, that fits onto there, like so. That's that, that fits into there, like that. Okay, I think we're ready for the battery now. <sighs> Okay, that's the battery in. Right, before we do final assembly of the bodywork, we'll just check it, I suppose. Yeah, we'll call that good. Is that even the right... with that. Right, and there we have it. Total reassembly time, one hour, 37 minutes. That was two hours, 50 something minutes to take it apart. And uh, I just completely forgot who I'm supposed to be. Ha! <laughs> there you go, job's a good one. Hour and 37 minutes to put it, put it all back together. It was uh, two hours, 50 minutes to take it apart. So there you go, four and a half hour job. Was it easy? Yeah, it's easy. I just don't like doing it. I'd much rather be out there working than constantly repairing it. I don't know why it has to let me down. Anyway, we can go back to work now. If you like the content, give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, consider it. Doesn't do you any harm. If you were subscribed and you're not seeing me in the feed, just check your subscriptions. Anyway, thank you all for staying with me on this one. We'll catch you on the next one. Bye for now.